Prometheus was the proof that divine power could be copied by mortal hands. From the moment our ancestors first struck stone against stone to create fire, humanity has been engaged in a love affair with technology. Greek automata, Roman aqueducts, Chinese seismographs, all were early signals of a species convinced that cleverness could rival creation. If you think about it, techno-optimism was always there, but its latest try to get repopularized, it was by a guy with the head in the shape of an egg in his manifesto. If the Enlightenment was the belief that reason could liberate humanity, techno-optimism is its darker sequel. The belief that intelligence, natural or synthetic, can liberate reality itself. Techno-optimism is the mindset that says we can fix the world and lift billions out of scarcity. And without that optimism, we box ourselves into decline because pessimism builds nothing and optimism makes on live longer. Silicon Valley became the modern citadel of techno-optimism where move fast and break things became a mantra and disruption of virtue. But true optimism is brutal and demands the confrontation of every failure, every unintended consequence, every shadow of progress, and still insists on the possibility possibility of improvement. To build is to gamble that understanding will one day outpace destruction, as the belief that civilizations rarely die from resource scarcity, but from meaning scarcity instead. Society is the user experience for technology. Imagine a robotic heart transplant performed without ever opening the chest. A paralyzed man sipping cocoa, guided by a brain chip and robotic arm. A monkey effortlessly playing Pong with its mind, and you streaming Netflix faster than ever. The same camera can stream your pet or power a panopticon. The same artificial intelligence can cure disease or surveil citizens. Tech gives capabilities, but our culture, law, and norms decide how capabilities feel in everyday life. Some are convinced that those who peddle techno-optimism reached an insane level of FU levels of money where you can live off of your investments and start to lose touch with the real world and real people's problems. And optimism without proximity becomes abstraction, as the term has a broader lineage in the early Silicon Valley culture. But those those fight back and say that to fear the post-human is to forget that humans have always been post-something, like being post-ape, post-tribal, and post-analog. So maybe the next leap won't erase us, but it will archive us instead, preserving our work as living source code for what comes next. That's techno-optimism in about 100 seconds. If you enjoyed the content, you can support the channel by giving a like, share, or subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.